Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. Tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw was the follow-up or the fallout show from last night's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which had two really great, really dramatic matches. Neither of those two matches had anything to do with Monday Night Raw, as they were SmackDown's addition to the pay-per-view. And everything Monday Night Raw brought to the table last night was absolute garbage, so it should be a surprise to absolutely none of you that tonight's episode of Raw was complete and total garbage, full of failures and mental collapses. Mental collapses by the creative team because the WWE thinks you are an idiot. They think I'm an idiot. And they think we have... No memory. And we are going to talk about all of those things, plus this terrible, terrible card that they put together tonight, up and down, right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare. You are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's Monday Night Raw Review and Reaction Show. Let's do it. <laughs> This show continues to be an absolute dumpster fire. They think we're idiots. They think we're idiots. We just spent the last summer, maybe even more than that, with wild cards and brand invitationals and absolutely no respect for a brand split at all. And then just because you did the draft two weeks ago, that doesn't reset everything and mean we forgot we're starting to build towards Survivor Series, and Tom Phillips has the nerve to say, Oh, this is the one time of year that Raw vs. SmackDown superstars collide. Are you brain dead? You obviously think we're brain dead. You think we've forgotten everything we see. we just seen some interbrand matches just like two weeks ago. They haven't even established who's on what brand permanently yet. As of tonight, Monday Night Raw moved Tucker back to SmackDown, because they realized, oh shit, we messed this up. How are we going to have Otis versus Tucky if these are on two separate brands? They have no clue what they're doing. And you want to build Survivor Series around champion versus champion inter-brand matches. You're going to have five-on-five five men and women elimination matches. And what does any of it mean? It means nothing. We say this year in and year out when they do this shit with the Survivor Series where they have the brand warfare. If nothing is at stake, it doesn't matter. You're not going after each other to win anything. Bragging rights. Who gives a damn about bragging rights? Raw has no claim to any bragging rights. They're the worst wrestling show on the planet. SmackDown automatically has bragging rights because they got Sasha Banks and they got Roman Reigns and Jey Uso killing it over there. They are the superior brand. There is no denying it and nothing they could do at Survivor Series if they have Raw give a clean sweep of the night once again as they did just a couple of years ago. It's not going to mean Raw's a better show. Raw is garbage. Raw is garbage. And you can see that just in the way that they handled Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre tonight. Why is Drew McIntyre there tonight? I'm sorry, wasn't he in Hell in a Cell last night? Wasn't he bleeding internally? Didn't he take a 15, 16 foot drop from the side of the steel cage through a table? Don't you think you should be selling the damage done in Hell in a Cell? If you can go in Hell in a Cell and be put through it like Drew McIntyre got put through it and then be at work the next day, on top of that, be able to have a match and then also have a brawl at the end of Raw to, to beat up Randy Orton once again. What is the point of Hell in a Cell? Did we see Mick Foley on the Monday Night Raw after he went exploding through the table off the top of the Hell in a Cell? No. No, there is no... Honor in wrestling anymore. They don't care to keep things special. They don't care to tell a proper story. Drew McIntyre should not have been on the show tonight. They should have told everybody that due to his injury sustained in Hell in a Cell, 
Randy Orton kicked his ass, Drew McIntyre will not be here tonight. It builds anticipation for Drew McIntyre. What's he going to say when he does return? We would care then. And then you would have a lot of breathing room tonight to start Randy Orton versus The Fiend. Which, as I was talking about it last night, seems like the better of the two things. But when you watch the type of creative garbage that Raw puts together, there's no way they are going to do that feud justice. It's probably going to feel and be just as bad as it was the first time around before Bray Wyatt was the fiend. It's terrible. So terrible to the point where we have to see Retribution, which is already a hot, steaming, piling, flaming bag of garbage, lose again tonight to the Hurt Business. But that's not even what makes it bad. What makes it bad is how they go about it. We have another four-on-four Survivor Series-style elimination matchup between these two factions. And one of the eliminations was thanks to some really spastic dance moves by Mia Yim. And everybody on the announce team and the referee and everybody else stopped remembering that she was part of Retribution, that her name is Reckoning, which is even worse than all of the guys' names, which we haven't really talked about on this channel yet because I don't want to talk about it. I love Mia Yim. I think she's a fantastic talent. But she's being wasted here. And she was made to look like an idiot. Sure, it was all psychological and she was just getting into the mind of the Hurt Business to cause a distraction which allowed MVP to be eliminated from this matchup, but she looked like an idiot. And everybody's reaction was stupid. And she got in the ring and she's just convulsing around and she's flopping around and she's screaming, get it off me like she's seeing spiders crawling up her skin. Who wrote this shit? Whoever wrote that or booked this segment, whatever road agent had something to do with it, they gotta go. They gotta go. That was ridiculous. That was just as ridiculous as Retribution losing this match. They were all eliminated. Ali got himself eliminated by disqualification. That doesn't save anything. And you clowns coming out later going, oh, we don't care about wins and losses. We're going to shut it down. I wish you would shut it down. Shut Retribution down because it's not going anywhere. Everybody got all excited when Ali jumped in. Oh, Ali's going to be the leader. This is going to end up being a good thing. No. No, they don't care about Retribution. It is obvious when you watch this episode of Monday Night Raw. As soon as they announced it was going to be elimination, already you're going to have at least two of these guys take a pinfall. I don't care anymore about Retribution. I barely cared to begin with about this stupid faction. They've done nothing but lose and look like idiots and now dance and spastically. And you add that to the list of Retribution's contributions to the sports entertainment industry. Did you ever see anything like it in your life? I never did. All of a sudden, MVP standing there calling her Mia Yim. Mia, are you all right? Referee, Mia, you all right? Tom Phillips, oh, Mia Yim, what's going on with me? Oh, you reckoning. Blah, blah, blah. This, was, <laughs> this was really, really bad. And then they're having qualifying matches tonight to get on the men's tag team for S- Survivor Series, which is the right thing to do. I always enjoy that. You want to have qualifiers. But how do you put Sheamus over Matt Riddle? It's obvious with this that the WWE is punishing this man for all of the troubles he has been coming across in his personal life, which we are not going to discuss because it's none of our fucking business and I don't care. Matt Riddle's a human being and what goes on in his personal life, that's his fucking business. That's not for us to discuss. I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks about it. But if you're going to not have him win... He's a new superstar on Raw. Don't you want to save him from being buried on a weekly basis, so to speak? And if you don't have plans to push him and you don't want him to win because of what he's going through in his personal life, don't book him! Don't book him! Sheamus and Matt Riddle put on a great match tonight. Probably the best match of the night. But it's worthless. Because it did nothing for Matt Riddle at the end of the day. It got a win for Sheamus. And Sheamus is going to be on Team SmackDown now. Who else is... I'm I'm sorry. On Team Raw going against SmackDown. 
Who else made this team tonight? AJ Styles had another match with Jeff Hardy where he found a way to call him a drunk somewhere along the lines, I'm sure. He had his big, tall, new best friend with him. Played a little bit of a factor in the match. But Jeff Hardy losing again. Crazy. And of course, Elias had to get involved, which was very predictable. So what did you think was going to happen when Keith Lee was taking on Elias later for a spot on the team? Of course, Jeff Hardy's going to come out and get involved. And they're going to continue going round and round with this bullshit. And it means absolutely nothing. On the positive side of things, Keith Lee made the team. So that's good. So you got Sheamus, Keith Lee, and AJ Styles as part of Team Raw as of right now. But it gets much worse than that because now on the women's side of the equation, since Asuka's going to be in a title for title match, not title for title, champion versus champion match at SmackDown versus the newly crowned SmackDown women's champion Sasha Banks, she can't be the team captain. And now we have nothing but losers to decide on as the Raw team captain. Nia Jax thinks she's the captain. Shayna Baszler thinks she's the captain. Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose think they're captain material. And these four women were selected by Adam Pearce, the unofficial GM of the WWE right now. And placed on the team. They didn't have to earn their spot like anybody else. They were placed on this team because, well, they're the women's tag team champions. And Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke haven't haven't lost yet. They've had two matches. They've had two matches. That qualifies you to be part of a Survivor Series team. Well, they haven't lost yet, so they're good. Get out of here. Get right out of here with that. And then to, to make the fifth member, they put together their, a matchup of the all of the remaining women on the roster. And of all of the women, who gets the spot? Lana. I'm, I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. She was out there with Peyton Royce and bam, bam, I'm Lacey Evans. I smell like moth balls. Still. <laughs> so what are we looking forward to? What do we care about the Survivor Series anymore? If they don't care, why should we care? They're putting this whole thing together like it's supposed to matter, like we're supposed to give a damn. This is something that is only effective when the brands are solidified against one another throughout the entirety of the year. Most of these guys just joined up on their new brand, and now they have to defend it and honor it and represent it like they've been there forever. Some of them have been on the show quite a lot throughout the year, but they've always been SmackDown superstars on Raw and vice versa. Now all of a sudden, they're going to be loyal. We're loyal, and we're going to beat the shit out of each other for nothing. I don't understand it. Why don't they do something special? Survivor Series, you have all these matches, and you keep tally, and whichever brand wins gets number 30 in the Royal Rumble, gets the main event spot at WrestleMania to close the show. Any other type of caveats or or bonuses you want to give, you could do that right there. It raises the stakes to every single match of the night. Now, we are going to get some interesting matchups for Survivor Series. Sasha and Asuka is one of them. Drew McIntyre versus, I'm sorry, Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. How are they going to get around that? That screams disqualification. The Fiend is going to get involved for sure. For sure. The Usos can't do shit because they're going to fall in line and they are going to be behind their cousin at that point part of this new faction that's coming that I can't wait to see what goes down on SmackDown. The complete opposite of how I felt about Monday Night Raw. I can't wait for Monday Night Raw to be over. As soon as 8 p.m. hits, I start dreading it. I start dreading it. And the minute Drew McIntyre's music hit, I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing here? He should be laid up in a hospital somewhere. The Hell in a Cell, I guess, isn't as damaging as it used to be. That's just a couple of things 
on this night. Actually, actually, most of it in a really quick recap of everything that pissed me off tonight. But there was a whole lot more, including The Miz and John Morrison. They come out there and they are so cringeworthy. John Morrison is awkward as fuck. The Miz just keeps running his mouth, talking like he's the best thing since sliced bread, which I guess is what The Miz's gimmick is. He thinks he's an A-lister, he thinks he's top-notch, but he is just mid-card right now. And they gave him a briefcase with no plan. He's talking shit like he's going to cash in on Randy Orton. He wanted to talk tonight about how he did it once before and he's going to do it again. Meanwhile, he gets beaten in a singles match tonight by Drew McIntyre, who was just almost killed in a Hell in a Cell last night in four minutes. So what good is the money in the bank on The Miz? He ain't cashing in anytime soon. This is a dead briefcase. Just as dead as it was when it was around Otis, because Otis wasn't going to win no matter who he challenged for it. What a ridiculous, ridiculous show. Absolutely terrible. The first match of the night went almost 10 minutes. It was AJ Styles defeating Jeff Hardy. Just typical shit. Then you had the Lucha House Party defeating Akira Tozawa and Drew Gulak in two minutes. First of all, why are Tozawa and Gulak a team? They have been at each other's throats, feuding with R-Truth over the, hey, look at me, I'm a big old clown, and I don't give a shit who knows it. I wear a giant gold belt that looks like an avocado. And now tonight, they showed you Monday Night Raw drafted the Lucha House Party to their show just to show you how worthless they actually are because they inserted them in a 24-7 gimmick. This matchup wasn't about Lucha House Party's first tag team match on the brand or anything of that note. It was about our truth Coming out with that ridiculous belt which belonged in the trash just like every idea that they have for the 24-7 championship. And it was a waste of everybody's time. By the time this thing was over, everybody was trying to pin our truth Nobody was successful. And he's still the 47,000 time 24-7 I don't give a shit champion. We had the Firefly Funhouse where Bray Wyatt wanted to come out dressed up as the Mad Hatter. Alexa Bliss showed up for the first time, well for the second time, in the Funhouse. This time she was dressed up not as Freddy Krueger, but as Chucky from Child's Play. And there was an interesting little interaction here. Alexa Bliss poisoned Rambling Rabbit. Isn't that special? Wasn't that heartwarming? Doesn't it bring a family together? Nothing brings a family together like murdering a rabbit. (laughs) I didn't mind this. I I liked where they're going with this. And I, I want to, I want to be excited for The Fiend and Randy Orton. I do. And when they took steps in this segment towards that, I thought, okay, this could maybe be good if they do the right thing but I have no faith in them to pull it off Keith Lee told Charlie Caruso that there's no question Braun Strowman cheated last week instead of losing like a man and now he's going to show Braun Strowman what a real monster is but first he has to go fight Elias what Braun Strowman's going to end up on this fucking team next week that's what's going to happen And then we're going to have that infighting bullshit. They're probably going to eliminate each other. So nobody has to eliminate them from SmackDown. WWE garbage. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler were talking to Adam Pearce about being captain. We kind of talked about that already. I don't want to talk about it again. So we're not. Keith Lee would then go on to defeat Elias in 10 minutes. Thanks to the help of Jeff Hardy. Who smashed another guitar across Elias' back after the match. Then we had a backstage segment with the Hurt Business where they're walking by the woman's bathroom. The woman's bathroom. And some jerk-off, some dude, is going to walk in. And they're trying to tell him, like, hey, you can't go in there. That's our bathroom. You, that's your bathroom? It's a fucking woman's room. Now, I know they're just messing with the guy, but talk about continuity errors. This is how bad this company is. They didn't even see... That it's not just a regular bathroom. It's not a unisex bathroom. It's a fucking woman's room. 
So you have a man trying to enter the woman's room, and then you have four other dudes claiming that that's their bathroom. It's the little things sometimes that really, really piss me off. Randy Orton tells everybody he's not afraid of the fiend. Then we had to see a video package for the Hurt Business and Retribution's disaster that we've had to live over the last couple of months. They announced Bobby Lashley is going to face Sami Zayn, United States Champion versus Intercontinental Champion. And they talked about how they were feuding in the past. Remember how bad that was? Remember Bobby Lashley's sisters and all of that shit we had to see with Sami Zayn? Fucking ridiculous. But at least this is a one-off. It's one night. We're not going to see any of that nonsense again. And what part of you thinks that Sami Zayn is going to end up winning that match? They love the Hurt Business so much. They think it's so important. They think it's so great. And they don't even put Sami Zayn on shows. So who do you think is going to win that? Eight-man tag team elimination match. Hurt Business defeated Retribution. <laughs> Me, I'm spazzed out. Everybody else either tapped out, got counted out, or got disqualified. Retribution remains a bunch of losers. Retardribution. Just the fucking worst. Absolutely ridiculous. Angel Garza was in the back talking to Mandy Rose. He's trying to get with Mandy Rose now. Mandy Rose is like, no, dude, I'm still pretty close with Otis. Then he just immediately bumps over to Dana Brooke, and now he wants to bang Dana Brooke. And I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at, bro? Why would you go from Mandy Rose and then look at Dana Brooke and not go, eh? Because that's what, what, I, what I would do. That's just me. Then Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax show up. And he's just going down the list. He's looking at Shayna Baszler like, hey, what's up? But then he's like, oh, hello, beautiful. And Nia Jax shows up. He wants to give her a rose. Nia Jax is like, no thanks. And then she takes the rose and gives him a wink. And I'm supposed to care? What the fuck is wrong with Angel Garza? A couple of weeks ago, this guy's walking around with a five-foot-tall blonde that weighed about 100 pounds soaking wet. Then he's attracted to Selena Vega at some point, I believe. Then he's attracted to Dana Brooke. And then he's attracted to Mandy Rose. And now he just wants to fucking bang everybody. This guy's worse than, than an 18-year-old teenager right out of high school. Holy shit. What a ridiculous, stupid segment. If I have to hear also one more time that Elias' fucking album of Nickelback songs is number two on the fucking, on anybody's list, iTunes, Spotify, the number two song in the soundtrack category, the number two song in the, in the whatever fucking category, you know what it's the number one song in? The Wasted Time category. Number one song in the 2000s rock category. Fucking awful stuff. Awful stuff. I listen to the... It's... It's... Meh. There's nothing special about it. Got a couple of nice rhythms to it, but it's nothing I ain't ever heard before. Awful. Drew McIntyre defeated The Miz in four minutes with John Morrison. It didn't matter. He made them look like a couple of idiots, which they are, so there should be no surprise there. They needed to tell everybody that Matthew McConaughey was in the house. Matthew McConaughey was in the Thunderdome on the screen. Who cares? Kofi, I, actually, I like Matthew McConaughey. I think he's a fucking great actor, and I would rather watch any of the movies that he's ever been in, even some of the bad ones, than had to sit through another episode of Monday Night Raw like this. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are in the back, and they're acting like the Street Profits. And I actually thought this was kind of funny, but I also knew what was coming, and that was that they're going to be facing the Street Profits at Survivor Series Champion versus Champion. These two guys were just in the back last week trading belts as buddies, and now they're going to go one on uh, two on two in his tag team encounter. And we're supposed to believe that there's heat there. You think they're going to build it up enough? How are you going to build up these interpromotional matches without having the superstars invading the brands and such? You're just going to do promos and, and stuff against each other, but never... In, uh, so fucking confusing and stupid. Even more, Asuka joined them. Asuka showed up because they had nothing better to write for the WWE Raw Women's Champion than to throw her in another segment where she could speak Japanese because speaking Japanese is funny. To some people, I guess. But as we talked about last night and Friday, speaking Japanese is not funny. 
That doesn't make it funny. Just because you don't understand it and it sounds strange to you, that doesn't make it funny. And Oscar wants the smoke. She wants the smoke. So do I. Pass me the blunt because I need to get really high right now before I drop dead of boredom. <clears throat> it was fucking ridiculous. I lost my spot here for a second. They announced the Raw Women's Tag Team at Survivor Series. We went over this. They, they just placed the two tag teams on the Survivor Series team. Jax and Baszler and Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Then we had a fatal four-way with Lacey Evans, Peyton Royce, Lana, and Nikki Cross, who made her debut on Monday Night Raw with some really, really bad music. All of the fucking music in this sucks. Remember the days when you would watch wrestling and somebody's music would hit and it would just give you chills? Or there would be a little twinge in your spine because the glass would shatter and Stone Cold was coming out? Or you heard the Rock's music hit and it used to just electrify you? No pun intended. It's just really what happened. DX. The NWO. Even Sting, who had this real theatrical cinematic music. When you heard that music, you knew shit was going down. You hear the songs on all of these superstars, and they're all generic. They all can sound very much like each other's songs. It's like whoever's producing this shit only knows three chords. And he keeps doing the same progression over and over again but uses a different tempo and a different beat. One time he's got a hip-hop guy, one guy he's got a heavy metal guy. And one time, but it's all the same fucking song. The Hurt Business's song sounds exactly like Seth Rollins' new song, only with a little bit more beat to it. Awful. How they root Nikki Cross had a great fucking song. And you gave her this really girly, stupid like, glam rock song that doesn't fit her at all. Fucking awful. And out of all of those women, Lana won this match. And then she got put through a table again by Nia Jax, who's now going to be on the same team with her at the Survivor Series. What is the point of this? I don't know. I don't even want to know. Ali cut a promo with Retribution saying they don't care whether they win or lose. And he said that we would suffer and they will win. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll believe that when I see somebody actually win from your little goon squad, Mr. Mustafa Ali. They are writing this faction into oblivion. I want nothing to do with it. I hope Retribution disbands sooner than than later because it's the worst thing going in wrestling it makes no sense they're booked nonsensically they have a great leader who can cut a hell of a promo but what does it mean when all they do is fucking lose it means nothing your threat your veiled threats mean absolutely nothing it's a waste of everybody's time Sheamus defeated Matt Riddle in what was definitely my favorite match of the night. I never usually have a favorite match on Raw because they either all suck or by 10 p.m. I'm falling asleep. And sometimes that does happen and then I have to do the review on a Tuesday. Thankfully that didn't happen tonight and that's because I was looking forward to a moment of bliss with the special guest Randy Orton. And I thought that it was kind of interesting how... There was the back and forth between Alexa. Randy didn't want to play any fucking games. And he was just like, listen, if he's here, if you got a trick to play on me, let's just do it. Tell me where the fiend is. Alexa was not going to divulge where he was. She instead made reference of how Randy and uh, Drew last night burned the house down at Hell in a Cell. And that set off a little click in Randy Orton immediately. Oh, well, there it is. Burning the house down, you must be referencing when I burnt down the Wyatt compound. Now, he didn't say that. I'm paraphrasing, actually, but it is what happened. And then McIntyre comes out. Drew McIntyre comes out. They ended up brawling. Alexa Bliss was cracking up on the top turnbuckle. She thought it was hysterical. Then McIntyre set up to deliver a claymore 
as if Hell in a Cell last night didn't ever happen and the lights went out, the red light came on, Drew McIntyre was in the ring, but Randy Orton was on the ramp. Somehow he got out of the ring and up the ramp in time when the lights went out, only to be confronted by the Fiend. He did not want to go any closer to him. He felt his presence behind him. He never really turned around to look at him, instead making a beeline back to the ring to end up beating the shit out of Drew McIntyre. And Monday Night Raw goes off the air with Randy Orton beating down Drew McIntyre on the announce table. And that's how we're getting this feud started with The Fiend, which is why I now immediately know that it's not going to be what it's cracked up to be or what it should be. I don't know if maybe they ran out of time, but it was crazy. Randy Orton was beating Drew McIntyre down as we went off the air. It was crazy. And I I think this episode just proves, without a shadow of a doubt, that Monday Night Raw has their head up their ass. They are the worst wrestling show in existence. The company is the worst wrestling company on the planet in a business sense. Because you're promoting an interpromotional pay-per-view as if you don't have interpromotional matches. You still had the balls to have Xavier Woods and Tom Phillips on multiple occasions on this night claim that Survivor Series is the one night of the year where we see Raw and SmackDown superstars collide when that's all we've been seeing for the last few months. We're not stupid. I'm not stupid. And I know you're not stupid. And that's why you're going to smash the like button right now. If you enjoyed today's review and reaction show, if you agreed with anything I had to say, if it made you laugh, if it made you cry, if it made you understand why this show is a complete and total train wreck, hit that thumbs up for me. Share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world. And we continue to push towards that 3,000 subscriber mark. And you can do your part. If you are not subscribed and you have watched this review for the last 32 minutes, then you are interested, you liked it, and you need to be a sledgehead of the Sledgehammer Army. All you gotta do, hit that subscribe button right now. You could also follow me on Twitter, at Nick Nightmare is the handle, and you could check us out at Nick underscore Nightmare on Instagram, and you could be part of my Inktober journey. We took part in the Inktober Drawing challenge this year. If you like art, if you like inking, if you like comics, if you like to see cool shit, go check out my Instagram right now where you will see right now 26 drawings that I have done. One every single day of the month. Some of them wrestling related, some of them with more pop culture uh, things in mind, but all of them done 100% by me, 100% original, and more to come as we still got five or six days left to go in this month as we head towards Halloween. My favorite night of the year, WWE brought back Halloween Havoc to NXT instead of bringing it back as a big event that we could all enjoy in the main roster scenario. More poor decision-making by a terrible, terrible team. It's no wonder that they got ads up looking for writers. And I would normally put my name in the hat, but one, they ain't going to call me. That's one. And two, I wouldn't work for them for no money. Because I ain't going to sit in a room and write some, some great shit, some really good shit for the old man to tell me no. I think he and I would butt heads every day. It would not be worth my time. But this show was definitely worth your time. This channel is worth your time, so make sure you're subscribed. So many of you guys are watching that are not subscribed. I checked it out in the analytics. There's about 60% of you guys that watch this show that didn't subscribe yet. What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Join in on the fun so you don't miss anything we got coming at you. Like this Friday when we review SmackDown, which I'm very much looking forward to. Who am I? I am Nick Nightmare. This is the team. Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the World Heavyweight Champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball, the most important member of the team, as always, each and every one in view. And if you missed the review of Hell in a Cell, it'll be up in the annotations up above. If you missed the review of SmackDown over the weekend, which went up a little late, you could hit that in the annotations 
up above as well. That, my friends, is going to do it. We are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. <laughs>